All right, so in this video, we're going to talk about electron microscopy. Electron microscopy is one of the most powerful uh, and routinely used characterization techniques uh, in chemistry. Okay, and it extends beyond chemistry. It's used in biology, it's used in geology, uh, it's used in engineering all the time. Uh, so it's just really an important uh, piece of technology that uh, was really blossomed in the last, I'd say, 20 years. Um, there's two main types of electron microscopy, okay, uh, although there's many variations within this. Um, the first one that we're going to go over is called uh, TEM, transmission electron microscopy. Uh, and then we're also going to go over a, a, a second kind, which is called scanning electron microscopy also sometimes called secondary electron microscopy, but both of those uh, acronyms are still SEM. And so a little bit about, you know, how a microscope works, right? Just a, just a plain old light microscope. You know that you have um, lenses. This isn't a physics class, but basically if you do the ray optics, the, the tr trace, trace out the rays on this, you end up with uh, an, an image that is bigger than what you started out with. Right, um, and depending upon the ray optics, sometimes this can be upside down or not, but that's the whole point, right? To magnify something. Um, so it's, it's really important to think about when we're talking about uh, an electron microscope, it's important to think about, you know, what are the differences between a normal light microscope and an electron microscope? A light microscope is a, is a typical optical microscope, okay? And so, um, you know, the main thing is that what you're using to illuminate is different. In a light microscope, you're using light, and in an electron microscope, and then you're seeing with your eyes, right? And what's the detector? The de de detector is your retina, right? Um, in an electron microscope, uh, you are using electrons to see, okay? But you can't see electrons, so you um, have to transmit those electrons somehow into an image that you can see, see with your eyes. So. Usually this is done through some sort of luminescent uh, plate that when electrons hit this plate, you will see it. And we'll, we'll talk about, there, there's different ways, okay? Depends on whether or not it's SEM or TEM. Um, but you have an electron gun and the electron gun is what is uh, generating the electrons that are used to do the imaging. Um, in, in a light microscope, you know, lenses are typically made out of polished glass, right? In an electron microscope, you can't, you can't use glass, you can't, you can't do that. Um, you have to use, uh, it's, it's not a physical lens, now it's an electromagnetic lens. So you're basically bending electrons with magnets, okay? Uh, how do you get magnification? In a light microscope, magnification is changed by moving the lens up and down, right? Um, in an electron microscope, the focal length, okay, yeah, changing the focal length, right? Um, the focal length is changed by changing the current in the, the coils of the, mag, the electromagnets, okay? So, so very similar, Sim, similar principles, basic principles, I'd say. How do you view the sample? Uh, we mentioned this, you know, with your eyes, okay, on the light microscope. Um, in electron microscope, you're gonna need a digital camera or, or, or commonly a fluorescent screen. Electrons hit that screen and, and then fluoresce in some sort of material. And do you use a vacuum with the light microscope? No. Um, in an electron microscope, this is why electron microscopes tend to be very, very expensive, is because the entire electron path uh, from the gun where the electrons originated to the camera must be under vacuum. Because if it's not in, under vacuum, the electrons that are using, these are very high energy electrons as we'll see, and we'll see why they're high energy electrons. Um, the very high energy electrons that you use have to be in a vacuum because if you have a bunch of stuff, air, right? not under a vacuum, if you have a bunch of air, you're just gonna ionize air. And so the electrons are just gonna react with air and then not go where you want them to go. And so that is sort of uh, the idea. Now, um, the thing with, with any sort of microscope is the wavelength of your probe, right? Your illuminating source determines what resolution you can get. And so with a light microscope, you're using visible light hundreds of nanometers, right? We know blue lights around 400 nanometers, red lights around 700 nanometers. So what does that mean? That means the best resolution that you can get is about that wavelength, okay? Um, you can't get, you can't see something that's 100 nanometers if what you're probing it with has 
a, a wavelength that's much bigger than that. I, I think that kind of makes intuitive sense, right? So if you go to higher frequencies, shorter wavelengths, then you'll be able to get better resolution. So you can you can see this if you use a, a microscope with red light versus blue light, um, you'll be able to see different things. You'll be, I mean, they'll look blue and red, but um, the one with blue light, you'll be able to see uh, uh, smaller objects, okay? So the resolution ends up being about equal to half of the wavelength, okay? There's some tricks that you can do to, uh, even in optical microscopes, get this a little better, but, but really that's what they are. They're weird tricks. And uh, fundamentally, this, this is true. All right, so if we're talking about an electron microscope, um, now we have an opportunity to have much better resolution. And here's why. You might be thinking, well, we're not using light. Light has waves. Do electrons have waves? And the answer is definitely yes. Remember, everything actually has wave, wave like and particle like duality. It's not just light. This is what um, de Broglie tells us. The de Broglie relationship tells us this. Right? It tells us that um, the wavelength of an object is given by Planck's constant over its momentum, mass times velocity. So uh, everything has wave and particle-like duality. This is the crazy business of quantum mechanics. Okay, It's one of the crazy things about it. And so uh, let's say we want to use electrons. You know, what, what sort of wavelength uh, are we going to have? And then what sort of resolution will we have for that microscope, for that electron microscope. And so um, we can first think about, okay, well, what is the velocity gonna be of those electrons? Well, the velocity of those electrons is related to how much energy we put in those electrons, okay? And I, I, I'm using, uh, so this is one half mv squared, right? We know energy equals one half mv squared, kinetic energy. So we're talking about kinetic energy of electrons because, hey, in order for there to be a wavelength, um, we know there has to be a velocity. So we better get these electrons moving somehow. So we're gonna shoot them out of this electron gun. And so whatever kind of energy we put into these electrons, that's gonna tell us our velocity. So let's just solve for velocity V there. Okay, so um, the energy I put it in units of electron volts, so it's EV. So there we solve for that, okay, fine. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug that expression into the de Broglie expression. And you're gonna get this, okay. So we have Planck's constant over square root two times mass of an electron times the amount of energy uh, coming out of our electron gun. And if you plug in the values for this, okay, so 6.626 or 6.62 times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds, that's Planck's constant, um, over square root two times 9.1 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms, that's the mass of an electron, times um, now the charge of an electron that's this E part, okay? Electron volts means E times voltage. So charge of an electron, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs times voltage. That's gonna get us an idea of what sort of voltage do we need to apply to our electron gun to get a certain wavelength, okay? And so if you plug in 100,000 volts, um, you will get a lambda of only 3.9 picometers. That's insane. Okay, so 100,000 volts is actually very doable. You know, if you think about power lines and things, things like this, this is our high voltage stuff. So we have the, the sort of technology that can accommodate these sorts of high voltages, no problem. Um, and so within an electron gun, you, you can go up to like 100 uh, uh, kilovolt, kilovolts, 100,000 electric, uh, 100,000 volts. So 3.9 picometers. So that means your theoretical resolution is on the picometer uh, scale. That's just absolutely mind blowing, right? I mean, picometer is, is a lot less than a nanometer. And we know atoms are around one nanometer, right? So you're, you're talking about resolution far, far greater than an atom. Now, that's the theory based on the wavelength of the electrons. Unfortunately, we don't actually have picometer resolution in, in electron microscopes. Why is that? It's actually limited by the precision of the lenses, of the electromagnetic optics, okay? And this tends to restrict you to about 100 picometers. Okay, fine, I'll take it only 100 picometers. It's still incredibly, incredibly good. All right, so in the next video, we'll go over um, 
sort of uh, TEM, the construct of TEM, like, like the actual apparatus, and also later video will do SEM as well.